So the first is the area of, of electronic health records, right? Now, when you go to see a provider, you may notice that the provider, you, you may be too young to remember this, but it used to be a provider would sit and listen and talk to you. But now when you go to see a provider, particularly a, a primary care physician, they're basically sitting at the computer screen typing up, right? Now, the reason that's happening is, first off, they only have 15 minutes to see you. And so they don't have time or nor are they paid to capture those notes. Um, you know, I can say I, I know this from experience since I'm married to a physician, right? Uh, you know, it, it, her primary, my wife's primary care provider was writing patient notes this Sunday night, right? From everybody he had seen last week. And I guarantee that, that you're not paid for that, right? You are not, and that's family time, you know? It's, there's a huge opportunity cost involved with it. It's just not the money. So what the providers are doing is they're actually putting in text and numbers. Well, the numbers are captured automatically uh, into an electronic health record. And the most common type of um, EHR or electronic health record is manufactured by a company called Epic. So if you go to St. Elizabeth, if you go to Christ, if you go to Mercy, if you go to UC, um, or, or if you go to Tri Health, or if you go to uh, really any of the other major health systems in, in, in the Commonwealth, they all use Epic now. And Epic has really, really done a very good job in allowing those different types of providers to share data. Um, so you can go to see a provider at Christ, and they can capture data that you had from um, St. Elizabeth, or I had healthcare up at Ohio State University a few years ago, and I go to St. Elizabeth, well, they were able actually to integrate my St. Elizabeth chart with my chart at Ohio State, so there was one unified health record. Now, what was good about that is I didn't have to repeat tests, right? So if they could see the tests you've taken at other hospitals, then that saves a heck of a lot of money. Also, if I'm happier, I don't have to go sit in some uncomfortable chair waiting for tests and, and, and the like. And, uh, uh, and, and also it's just better care. It's more, more timely care and the doctors can coordinate care. So the government, as I said, has spent $38 billion uh, since 2012. And I'm happy to say I have been a recipient, a lot of grants, in those $38 billion and a lot of consulting work in those $38 billion. Um, so I'm not exactly impartial in it, but uh, you know, we're implementing EHRs, there's still issues. But the idea though, is that we have a computer entry of the patient data. Once we have that data in a database, we can do really great things with it. Okay, we can start to do all those other things we, we talked about. So um, the type of career for electronic health records, and initially we've had a lot of students who graduated and, and work directly with the EHRs is you're implementing health, electronic health records, either working for a company like Epic or Cerner or Greenway, one of the larger vendors of EHRs um, and, and helping install them or helping at the, the, the local hospital install them. And then once they're installed, they need to be maintained and you need to train people how to use them. So you need to be subject matter experts on how to use it and pull the data out. But anyway, EHRs are a very vital part. And think of it as the way that the, the, the data are captured. 